As a gamer, the only thing worse than not having RGB is having RGB that is stuck in rainbow unicorn puke mode. And the worst part is that the motherboard and the fans wired up to it aren't even in sync. Now, I am no stranger when it comes to buggy RGB. As we can see here, over three years ago, I had some thermal take fans that had a problem playing nice with certain AMD motherboards because it needed a USB port that connects to the processor directly rather than going through the chipset on the motherboard. But over here, we have over 14,000 people that have looked up why their Corsair memory isn't lighting up. So what I eventually had to do in that case was go into Task Manager and kill the interfering processes of my MSI motherboard software that was keeping it from detecting the memory, or at least the chips on the memory to control the LEDs. But in this case here, I don't necessarily think there's an easy fix because the B550 motherboard series hasn't really been out that long. We're talking roughly three months. If we go to the actual support page on the ASRock website, the RGB software was last updated around launch time on 5.11. As of recording, it is 8.8.2020. So, it's been a while. It's certainly been too long if the software doesn't work. So, what makes me so confident that it's ASRock's fault that it's not working, and probably not for anyone? Well, let's take a trip to the installation directory of this ASRock software. So I'm going to my C drive, program files 86, go to ASRock utility, look at their RGB software, and in this bin folder, and here is where it actually flashes the RGB settings onto the RGB controller on the motherboard. Now, I'm going to have to make a cut in the recording when I get to that point because whenever I try and launch the RGB software, I lose everything I've recorded so far in the day. It is 8 p.m. and, well, I've been at this video for about six hours now, so I'm tired of losing my footage on this. But hopefully, this is the take that actually makes it through. We have a batch file here. If we take a look at that, we can just open that up in Notepad. It basically tells us to open this flash utility with this ROM here. But if we look at these file extensions here, we eventually come across an INI. An INI that goes hand in hand with this flashing utility. What's in this INI? Let's take a look. Well, this certainly looks promising. It is the name of the motherboard, including the chipset, and it looks like these are some settings here that tell the flashing utility how to flash the RGB chipset on the motherboard. Wonderful. So where does it say the B550 Steel Legend? X570 Steel Legend. Another X570 Steel Legend. A B450 Steel Legend. Hmm. That's weird. Are there any B550 chipsets in here? Let's do find on page. Are there any number fives? Yes, okay. And it's highlighting them for us. Okay, what about 550? Hmm, there are no 550 chipsets anywhere in here. And to make sure it doesn't need a B on it, if we just type in 57, yes, it has found all the X570 chipsets, nine matches. So their software does not support any 550 series motherboards, and it's been three months since it's last been updated. That makes me kind of annoyed, just a little bit that, you know, I spent $200 on this motherboard and I'm stuck with rainbow unicorn puke. Now, I am not the most aesthetics focused guy. I don't have sleeved cables for my video card, for example. But at the same time, there is going to be someone who buys this motherboard and is looks focused. I, and, and especially for $200, you'd think that they could just add one entry into this configuration file and, you know, get that working. 
Now, even if I were to try and guess what numbers to type in, I would still have to come up with the full motherboard name. And yeah, I could spend a few hours trying to guess and check this and then share the answer with you on YouTube and potentially put my motherboard at risk, but it probably wouldn't take one of the software engineers at ASRock this long to just add this to the INI file and just re-upload the compiled installer back to their website. So you may be thinking, all of this just for RGB? Why are you so mad about it? Well, the problem is that it's not just me who can figure out, well, not running the RGB software, I can live with that. There's no RGB control in the BIOS either. So like, I can't just turn it off or set it to a static color either. I have to use the software or it's stuck in rainbow mode. Now, what I'm going to have to do here is we're going to take a sudden decrease in audio and video quality because I'm about to deliberately crash my computer to show you what happens to anyone who freshly installs the software and tries to get it working. The results are far from good. If we just run this by itself, it doesn't know what to put onto that RGB controller chip, which is why we need to run the batch file, which will tell this to use that. So here we have it attempting the same thing over and over and what ends up happening is it flashes from red to orange and then it just freezes on orange. Except that the chipset is lime green and our fans are blue. Still no success, but the real interesting thing that happens is when you try and shut down the computer. And the computer is off. I've hit the power button to turn the computer back on here. But there is no display signal. I'm gonna turn on the room lights here. No video output. The fans are running at max. The computer is not turning on. So what I have to do is hit the power switch on that power supply. Wait a few seconds. The fans have come down from maximum speed. And it looks like we finally have a display signal. So yeah, that's what happens if you try and get your RGB working, is your computer won't boot up the next time you turn it on. It would appear that according to Reddit a month ago, I'm still not the only one to be having this issue. This guy uninstalled said it was even configurable by the BIOS under the previous generation motherboard, but it's not there anymore because presumably there's more features or CPU support taking up that BIOS ROM space. So unfortunately, this is the first RGB issue on this channel that I have not been able to find a way to fix. If you happen to work at ASRock or know someone who does, please reach out to them and see if they can get this fixed. If you happen to have an extra $200 or a spare AM4 motherboard and you would like to tinker around with those INI settings to see if you can find a combination of numbers that works, please share in the comments if you find something that works. I would happily test it myself on this motherboard, but all of my YouTube budget for the month has gone to some much larger, much more expensive builds and projects that you'll see over the next few weeks. But again, leave a comment below. Um, press F in the chat for any hopes of getting RGB to work on this motherboard. And I had really high hopes for this board too, but I went with this one for its two and a half gig networking and Two and a half gig networking is a whole nother rant. That'll probably be the next video or two that goes up, but long story short in that video, you can get two and a half gig network cards for like 20 or 30 bucks on Amazon, like new that work. That's work with an asterisk because I tried to hook one up to my NAS and well, several hundred dollars later, I finally have above gigabit network running through my house, but You'll just have to subscribe and watch that video when it comes out. But until then, I'm frustrated 
it is time to go see what Wi-Fi has knocked over, and I'll see you in the next one. Wi-Fi? What are you doing? Are you doing something you're not supposed to? Yeah.